you might be a great coach, but you can't help anyone if you do not have any clients. That means you got to learn to sell. Eh, not what you signed up for. Here's a hard truth. Your first duty as a fitness coach is to tell a prospective client, you need to start working out with me. If you don't, that person isn't going to get fitter and that person will not get healthier. Today on Run a Profitable Gym, we're going to talk about sales. Now, it's not slimy, dirty, horrible sales that we all hate. This is selling to help people, help people get fitter, help people get healthier. I've got one of the world's top gym owners here to give you some tips. Before we go further, please hit subscribe. I literally believe that you can use this show and all the episodes around it to improve your business and create the life that you want. So don't miss a single one. Hit subscribe now. Okay, on to my guest. Nate Muller owns Green Lake Strength and Conditioning in Seattle, Washington. His gym appeared on all three of our sales leaderboards in May. The first leaderboard is set rate. That's the number of people who book sales appointments to come see you and talk about joining your gym. The second, show rate. That's the number of people who book appointments and show up. It's almost never 100. Some people get very close. Some people have really bad show rates. No one on our leaderboard did, of course. Final, Close rate. That's the number of people who book appointments, show up, and buy something. Now, Nate was on all three leaderboards. In fact, his stats were he had 36 people set appointments, 33 showed up, and 28 closed. Those are huge, huge numbers. Can you imagine having 28 new clients at your gym? So, Nate told me he's going to share his secrets with you. Nate, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Hi, Mike. Thank you. I can't wait to dig into this. I always love it when I get to do this show and then there's someone who is on all three leaderboards because it shows kind of excellence across the board. So I'm just going to dig right in and we're going to get to the details here. Bring me to the top of your funnel. What is the number one thing that you did to get so many appointments based in or in May? Like, where do these people come from? Yeah, good question, Mike. So most of my clients are coming from web search, although it is pretty close uh, to people just coming by my location. I'm luckily, lucky to have a pretty high traffic location the visible front. Um, and so I bring in quite a few that way, as well as by referrals. Um, Ooh, there's a good one. Yeah. So those obviously help as well. So obviously that all starts with having a great service. Um, but going back to the web search, I do believe that one of the main reasons I'm doing as well as I am on web search is actually due to um, following up on asking my members for reviews. Okay. Um, so that's a big part of my, my weekly routine. Okay. So I'm going to dig into a couple of things there. Uh, you're, so you're talking, do you put ads behind this web search? Like, are you popping up in Google uh, as a sponsored thing? I don't really, I've played around here and there, but I, that's not a significant portion of my, um, incoming. Okay. So organic search brings a ton of people to your website. Correct. And what are they looking for? Like, what are they searching for? What are some of the things that bring them to your website? Yeah. Well, so interestingly enough, um, most of my, uh, people are just looking for the name of our business. So I think there's actually, uh-huh. but there's a decent mix in there. Um, after that, they are actually looking for, uh, generally a CrossFit gym in my area. We're not okay. actually CrossFit, um, but we come from CrossFit roots. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a big hit. Um, but then a lot of them are just looking for a gyms near me in, in Google local search with, I th- which I think is where I'm performing, um, really well due to those okay. Google reviews. Yeah. So you've done a good job of building up some organic SEO, search engine optimization, as we call it. And people are finding you when they're looking for gyms near me, which is a huge, huge deal at local SEO. John Franklin, our marketing head talks about that all the time. If people see your gym, when they search for that, that's huge, but even better, people are actually searching for the name of your business, which means that they somehow know about you. So you've mentioned a few things. How do you think they're finding out about you? Yeah, that's um, so as far as finding out, I do think that's where referrals come in uh-huh. in a big way. And then um, also for my location, I do think is also a, a really good um, opportunity. We're right on a relatively busy corner and people see us. Um, and then that's where, again, kind of tying it back to those reviews. I think you have to uh, support that with um, good, authentic marketing that I think in the form of those customer reviews is really key. Okay. So re- I've hit referrals on this show a whole lot. And the basic principle yeah. listeners is you get customers inside your business to refer their friends, family, coworkers, people in their orbit. And we have an exact mm-hmm. planet to brain that you can follow literally a template that helps you do this. It's systematic. Referrals don't just happen. We make them happen. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this because I want to ask you, Nate, about the other side of this reviews. How do you get yeah. people to, le- to leave so many reviews? Because we know Google has told us these, these are huge when it comes to SEO. Yeah, so th- this is my own homebrew uh, system, and it's Let's hear it. it's it's rather straightforward. <laughs> I dump a giant list of all of my clients um, by the date they started. I started this about two years ago. I started at the top of that list, and every Monday, I ask five of them for a review. I send them an email personally from me. 
I say, you know, explain, hey, it's important. We love having you at the gym. It's important to our business that we get reviews. Would you write one, please? I usually get one to two reviews out of every five that I ask for. Um, the next week, I come back around. Those five people that I ask for a review, if any of them have not yet given me a review, I send a follow-up email. Um, mm -hmm. In that one, I redirect them to Yelp reviews. I just say, hey, would you, you know, would you write a review on Yelp if you can't do it on Google? I don't incentivize them. I don't promise them anything. I just say it's important to us. Um, and if they don't do it then, then I leave them alone. Uh, and I just keep chipping away at that list. Um, at week in and week out, uh, my understanding, I'm not an ex SEO expert. I'm not sure anyone really is. I know no, that there's a lot of dark magic there. Mm -hmm. um, but my understanding is it is important not just to get reviews, but to keep them coming in and keep that volume steady. Um, and so that is why I've decided to kind of do it in this like five at a time to just kind of constantly beat that drum. And again, I think, you know, just getting one to two reviews per week can really make a big difference to your overall score. Yeah, I really agree with you. And again, I think I love what you said about the dark magic SEO people claim to know no one really knows except for the head Google employees and so forth. But what yeah. we do know, you know, what we suspect is that a steady stream of things, constant interaction, constant engagement, lots of things happening is much better than a flurry of activity and then nothing. So sometimes right. if people do these massive campaigns and they'll get like 40 or 50 reviews at a time, that's cool. But what happens when a searcher comes to that page and sees reviews from like two years ago and there's 40 or 50 of them? It's not the same thing as like a constant stream. So I love what you're doing there. And again, who knows if, uh, you know, Google approves of that as well. But I suspect that engagement, just like it is on social media, constant engagement, constant publishing, constant interaction is a much better thing to keep the snowball moving than flurries of activity. So you actually, you don't just outsource this, outsource this to a staff member or a bot. Like you personally email your members and ask for this? Mm-hmm. I love I, that. That So like as a CEO, this is valuable time. Do you yeah. think this is a great use of your time? It's a dumb question, but what do you think? No, it's a good question. I mean, I, I do think it means something different coming from the business owner. So that's why I've continued to keep this task myself. I have some plans to to spread it out a little bit and automate it a bit, but I'm pretty tentative to automate it because I, I just don't think people respond as well to automation as they do. Like you can tell the difference between being emailed by a bot, even though I use a template every time, it doesn't take me that long. Um, but I literally click send on every single email. Yeah. And I'm sure from time to time, you're like, you know, this member like, Oh, Tim, I saw you back squat 220 yesterday. Congratulations. I'm sure you can tack that yeah. stuff on. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It does yeah. give me that opportunity to personalize it just a touch that makes a difference. And that touch I would, I would suggest is probably the most important part because mm -hmm. the temp, the cut and paste, you know, people can smell that kind of stuff. A little bit of human touch is going to make a huge difference. And it's like, Oh, he remembered that. And he's congratulating me. I might be more inclined to leave a review. So when someone leaves a review, do they get kind of crossed off the list and taken out of that pool or how does that go? Yep. Yeah. So I manually keep an eye on that too, yeah, which is that's probably the most annoying part of the process is actually just remembering to see that they wrote a review. I, I always reply to their reviews to thank them. I thank them in the email and then I have to go back to my spreadsheet and mark that they did it. So I know not to bug them again, but right. um, again, for the overall value that I'm getting as best I can tell, I'm the best review gym in Seattle. Um, so it seems to be worth it after a few years. Do you know offhand how many reviews you've got up there? I think I'm around 180 right now. Wow. That is huge. And they're all spaced out in intervals of like a week or so. Exactly. Yeah. yeah Here's a nice question I got to ask. Do you ever get a bad one? You know, I've gotten one or two yeah. um, and I try to respond really professionally when I do. Mm -hmm. They've never come from me asking. That's usually when we made a mistake, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And that's one thing I've noticed is that um, people respond well to just admitting your mistakes and trying to make the best of it, right? I've seen other business owners that, um, you know, get defensive and try to argue with a bad review. I, I really respond publicly to them and say, wow, like we, our expectation is do better than this. I'm really disappointed that you had that service and let me follow up and see what I can do. And um, yeah, in fact, actually we've only had one like straight up bad review mm -hmm. since I've taken over and that was what I did. And admittedly um, it took some time, but that guy became a member and uh, changed his review from a one to a five star. Um, really? And I never asked him to do that either. I just, you know, I, I, I just, I, I was, I already was aware of the issue and, and following up with him anyhow, when he wrote the review, um, but then I continued to kind of persist and like not take it personally and just work through it with him. And, um, and he's, you know, he's become a great member. So. Ooh, so I'm going to point out two things for listeners here. The first is get reviews, do whatever it takes. A simple system that Nate laid out is just email five members a week. 
and ask for reviews. Yelp, Google, Facebook, whatever. Get some reviews. That is a huge thing that you can do. It's very simple. It doesn't take a ton of time, but it will have measurable results. Organic SEO without spending money. That is, there's a huge value on that. The second thing that you can do, if you get a bad review, don't sweat it. You can definitely look at it professionally and say, is there something that I can take from this to improve my business? If there is, do that and take those corrective measures. After that, respond professionally, move on. And in some cases, that's going to make it be enough to like make that person happier and change it. In other cases, that negative review may stick there. But if you went to a gym website and you saw 179 positive reviews and one negative one, what would you think? Eh, one unhappy person, maybe a little bit of a jerk, whatever. It's buried with the other review. So don't sweat that one bad one. Now, Nate, I'm going to ask you a little bit. What do you, exactly are you doing at your gym? Like you've got, you've, you've yeah. got to I'd like to know the basics, like where are you at? What do you sell? Who's your ideal client? Yeah, good question. So um, our ideal client is someone kind of in their middle ages, kind of 35 to 45. We obviously serve people across all, all adults. We're primarily focused on adults right now. Um, and they're a working professional. Generally, they're a parent, maybe with young kids. They're very busy and they want to come in and get a good, efficient workout um, and not get hurt. Right. So they're not trying to win any competitions. They're not trying to, in a lot of cases, they're not even trying to set PRs or anything. And they might even be here for their mental health as much as they are for their physical mm -hmm. health. Um, so that's kind of our core client. What we offer them, we have a few services. Our primary service is uh, strength and conditioning classes, right? Mm -hmm. So it's functional fitness. Um, we've really tried to take a lot of the competitive elements out of, uh, what most people know of for functional fitness. So we don't have leaderboards or RX weights. We just have workouts. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a workout of the day that most people are doing. We also offer our individualized design program. That's meant to meet people really exactly where they're at and design a program just for them. Is that so PT kinda, like one-on-one? -on -one? It's not one-on-one. -on -one, so it's kind of in the way that you deliver one-on-one -on -one training. It's most similar to semi-private training if, you've, gotcha. uh, if you're familiar with that, um, but it's a little bit different in that um, you have a coach developing a program for you like in semi-private training. It might be delivered by any one of a couple coaches in our gym. So it's kind of a like sh shared semi-private training in a way. Uh, so we have run classes of four to six, uh, but a little more of still teaching the member how to do the things on their own. So not counting on a coach to like literally walk them through every exercise, but building a program, building accountability. That is our big area for growth right now. That's the pro that's a newer program for us. And that's where I'm really trying to build my business. Um, I'm currently at about 250 um, active members on the group side, like just the regular group strength and conditioning. And that's about as many as I can handle in those classes. And so I'm really trying to grow the individualized design program. Okay. And how many square feet have you got? We're about 4,000 square feet. So okay, it's not a lot members? of space. Yeah. About a dozen. Okay. So you're maximizing like 4,000 square feet with about 250 yeah. people and about a dozen staff members. How many of those are full or part-time? They're all part-time. Okay, cool. And are, and you're the you're a full time now. Do you still coach yeah. and do things on the floor, or are you the CEO? I'm more in the CEO role. I coach okay. a little bit again to just to stay connected, but I coach you know two to four classes per week depending on who's sick or um, <laughs> cool. you know out of town or whatever, right? Okay, so I wanted to give people a lay of the land just so when people listen yeah. to you, they understand exactly what you're selling because it's not uncommon in the micro gym what you're doing. Very similar. Mm -hmm. You got some group stuff, you got some semi private stuff, which is personalized programming delivered maybe in a small group setting, but people are getting individualized programming. We have lots of podcasts on semi private training. So if you listeners are interested in that, check some of those out. Now, three of the bookings, we know how you're getting people. They're contacting you either through direct through referrals which are, you know, slam dunks for the most part, or they're coming at you from Google, which is fantastic as well. Three of the bookings didn't show for you, but that's a huge number because like I've had times when I've had like, I don't know, 60 leads and like seven show up, something like that. So what is your process for ensuring that people don't leak out at this stage of the funnel? Yeah. So that one is uh, automated in that they get an automatic text three days ahead of time and one day mm -hmm. ahead of time to remind. Um, then we do also follow up. Um, so in the event that someone doesn't show, we do follow up. So when we do look at, you know, the three that we miss, those mean they they missed throughout the month and we never even got them back in. So we, mm -hmm. we probably have more than that that missed their first appointment, but then we work really hard to try to get them back in. Again, we try to be understanding. We aren't like, bah, 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 you didn't show up. You know, we're like, hey, bummer. We know life happens. Please, we'd love we'd love to talk to you. Come on back in. Here's how to reschedule. Um, so we do have a follow-up process as well if people do miss. So listeners, 
follow up. Don't just assume that a booking is going to show up. You can automate this process. You can also add in human touches. There are people that I know that will do when they see a booking show up, they will send like a video text confirmation. Hey, I saw you were on our website. I can't wait to meet you. This is the details. Text me at this number, whatever, send. And they have, some of that can be automated, but other times they're doing it manually. Whatever you're doing, make sure that you are telling your leads, I can't wait to see you and follow up. And if they don't show up, they're not gone. You can keep after them. Now, Nate, does it feel weird at all to like, quote unquote, hound someone when they haven't showed up? Because for me, that was tough to get over. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I've tried to remind myself that, hey, like, I, especially since we don't do a lot of lead gen, right? Like these people went through a lot of trouble to find us, to decide they want to work with us and create an account and all that, that they've done quite a few things to even get to booking an appointment with us. So yeah, I try to just remind myself is like, they wouldn't be doing this if they didn't want this. And we are all busy. And so um, we need to just keep ourselves top of mind. And so I just kind of think about it as helping them achieve the goals that they clearly express interest in uh, by keeping us top of mind for them. Such a great way to put it, because if someone goes through the steps to book an appointment, to talk to you and to come to your facility, that person wants and likely knows that that person needs what you are selling. And if you don't follow up with that person, you're not doing a very good job as a gym owner. And it's not hounding them. It's actually helping them. Chris Cooper wrote an entire book on this. It is called Help First. I would encourage you to read it. It will change your mind about the sales process. Let's get into that. So you've got now sure. in the sales, uh, I'm going to just check my stats here. So you got uh, 33 to show up and you closed 28, a huge, huge number. How do you do it? Talk to me, talk to me about that sales meeting. What goes on in there? Yeah, so it's just an interview right? So we're really trying to get from them why they're here. What are their goals? What do we need to know about them? How can we help them feel welcome, right? Mm -hmm. So when we did start with Two Brain back in October, I just looked back that we we revamped that. So it, it had been a, a, a lecture of sorts before. I've done that. Right? Like, so, <laughs> yeah. So we kind of lecture them on how great we are and what we offer and all this yeah. stuff. And yeah. Um, and we really flipped it around to be just a, really more of an interview of them to try and make sure we know why they're here and make sure it's a good fit for them. And that's kind of how we pitch it to them. It's like, hey, we want to we want to understand you and your goals and make sure we're a good fit. We do occasionally refer people out, right? Like those few that we miss usually are just legitimately not a good fit. And we're OK with that. Um, so when we did switch to that, I did look back and we we moved from like about a 70 to an 80 percent close rate by just flipping the um interview process or flipping so a measurable around. bump just by changing things around yeah. you bumped up your close rate by 10 percent. yeah oh that's um, huge on average it moves from month to month right obviously but uh yeah it was great and and it made it feel less salesy honestly which was kind of yeah. fun like at first i was like i don't know if i i, I, I just tried it out because it had been recommended recommended and i wasn't sure but um in the end it was like oh this actually feels nice like i just let them talk and tell us why they want to join the gym and and they get to do all the selling. I don't even have to do the selling anymore. Like they, they do it for me. It's great. And that's the beauty of what Chris has put forward. Guy, yeah. Listeners, pres prescript, pardon me, prescriptive model is what it's called. You have a conversation. You've listened to find out what these people want to accomplish. You tell them how to accomplish it through your business and you slide over the price. With a pricing binder, we have templates that we help uh, our clients use. You can create your own, make it very simple. And there are some things that we can do in there, but it's, again, it's a simple presentation. It's not 35 pages of scrolling. You don't let them choose their own path. It's as simple as I want to lose weight. Our platinum package involves personal training three times a week, plus nutrition services, plus online coaching of some sort, whatever. And here's the price, 550 or whatever it is. Oh, I can't afford that. How could you afford something for 400? And there's a whole system that Two Brain teaches you. But the point being it's prescriptive and it's all about the client's goals. And something that you said, Nate, is really important. I didn't realize this originally. If you're talking too much in a sales meeting, that's a huge mistake. They need to be talking. Do you agree with me? Oh, absolutely. Well, there, There is that stat of like, it's not stat. It's a thing I've heard that like people tend to like you the more you let them talk, right? Yes. So you, you got to let them talk so they can enjoy their time with you. And when you were giving the lecture, because I did the same thing, it's like, here's this, here's our stuff, check out our thing, let's do a workout together. None of that gets to the root of their problems. I never asked these guys, like, why are you here? What do you want to accomplish? I just figured they want to do this hard workout. They want to see my cool equipment that I've, you know, placed in such an amazing manner and so forth. None of that mattered. If I had just said, this, why are you here? I would have known so much more, you know, your lecture, was it all full of like X-Fizz and like how great we are, that kind of stuff? 
Yeah, we would talk about our workouts um, and that we, you know, we do deliver, I do think we deliver a nice, unique version of functional yeah. fitness. And I think there are some key points that are different about what we do versus mm -hmm. others, but it turns out like nobody really cares about that, <laughs> the sales <laughs> process, right? right? So we've now moved that into our on-ramp process so they can, you know, understand yeah, why they're and here that's and what where it we're belongs. doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do you do these sales meetings or do you have staff that does them? I've, I'm slowly transitioning out of doing the sales. So for a while, I was the primary salesperson. Or I, I bounced around where someone was doing it for me. I was doing them. I'm now trying to work myself out of that sales process. I have three other people now helping me with it through different times a day. Um, I guess that probably is in, in um, a reason we're able to have so many is that I, I have built up a big enough sales team across a wide enough range of hours that I do think that makes a material difference in how many people we're able to bring in. So I have people serving appointments in the morning and in the evening and throughout the middle of the day. And so, you know, that just makes it available to more people uh, to get more people in. So listeners, I'm going to give you a quick summary here. Set rate. What Nate is doing is he is taking He's using referrals and organic marketing to get people to book appointments. He's got lots of appointment slots available with his sales team. So people don't have to be like, I can't make Thursday at noon. They can pick when they want. And there's a person available now show rate. He's automated much of that. You can figure out ways to do that. That involves personal touch or automation. Whatever you do, you're following up with leads, making sure they show up in the closing stage that is in the sales office, letting the people talk, tell them they're going to tell you their goals. You're going to lay out the prescription for how they accomplishment accomplish them. And then you're going to give them the price. They're going to sign up. And then you go through an onboarding process. Again, two brain has resources that lead you through every step of the way here. So if you're confused by it, a lot of it you can find in our blog, but there's even better stuff for our clients. They get done for you resources, plug and play consultations with sales experts, all this other stuff. Now I got to ask you this, Nate, because this is a huge one. A lot of people who are good at selling, and I've talked to other gym owners on the show, are amazing at selling. When they try and pass that off to staff members, everything goes poorly, right? So how did yeah. you ensure that your close rate didn't plummet when you offloaded some stuff to other people? Yeah, um, obviously I trained them first, right? So I, I gave them a good template. It's not obvious to me. I, I screwed yeah, it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. yeah, so I gave them a good template. I walked through it with them. We practiced some on our own. I had them sit in on some of my uh, appointments to watch. Um, and then I do track it, right? So I do use the two brain template to look at my sales data across not just the overall month, but across each of my sales people. And I've kind of turned that into a little bit of a fun game with our, our people. Cause I have made it clear to, to the sales team that like, I'm, I, nobody's getting a bonus based on their close rate or anything, but we do look at it every month and we kind of like just give high fives to each other on mm -hmm. how we're doing, fortunately. Um, and so, you know, there have been months where somebody seems like they're slipping or, or whatnot, but in the end, usually when I dig in and I, I then will follow up on the people that they miss and I'll look at the notes and I'll, I'll look, there's like, yeah, this person really mostly just got a few of the bad appointments that just weren't good fits. You know, mm -hmm. it's usually where we see the sales rate slipping is more to do with that than anything in the process. But, you know, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on it and I'm uh, talking to them and, and sharing knowledge. I encourage sharing knowledge between people. Like if somebody on my team figures out something new, you know, I want them to share it as well as I do as well. If I notice something going well or not well. Listeners, I'll give you a couple of things here. If you have referrals, booking appointments, and you're not closing a high percentage, something is broken in your sales process. Okay. Cause referrals are the warmest leads you're ever going to get. They are slam dunks. If they know someone inside your business, you can only screw that meeting up. So if you're, if you have referrals and you are not, don't have a high close rate, you need to work on your sales process. The second thing is, and people, regular listeners of the show will know Nate's just talked about systems. He's got a system for tracking metrics, for reviewing things, for addressing issues, for congratulating people when things are going well and adjusting and incorporating feedback and optimizing, right? Systemize, optimize all of these things. I need a gong on this show. And every time a gym owner, successful gym owner shows up, I ring it when they say I have a system because not a single person does not have a system. So if you do not have a sales system, you need to get one. Nate, talk to me about the one thing. Let's give people an actionable thing. Make it simple. What is something that a lister can do today who's like, I'm not very good at sales. What can they do today to take that number, whatever number it is, set show close and improve it? What would you give them? Well, I definitely would start with uh, downloading the T-Brain template. I'm pretty sure it is freely available, isn't it? Or um, uh, Which uh, one is this? Tell me which one you're referring the, to. The like no sweat intro template, questionnaire template. So there I is think. all sorts of stuff. 
I'm going yeah. to put a link to uh, to the prescriptive model. What I'll do listeners for you is okay. I'm going to put a link to yeah. a prescriptive model and it's got everything that you'll need to follow that in is in there. Some of our client yeah. only resources are behind a paywall, obviously for our clients. Sure. But this one article is going to tell you the system that the majority of our clients use in the sales meeting. So take me a little further than that, Nate. Yeah. So definitely give that a try and just start working through that. Right. Like upend whatever it takes upend your sales process to make it into an interview. If you're not already doing that, that is definitely a, a big change. That was definitely a big change for me. And, um, and it, again, it makes it so much more fun, honestly, <laughs> like to just get to, you get to hear good stories from them. You, um, you get to have a great chat. So definitely start there, um, on, on that sales process. Um, uh, obviously rewinding back to the leads process, I would, uh, Try that Google review. Unless you're in mm -hmm. Seattle, don't do that. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no. Try try asking for reviews and get a system together on asking for your reviews. I I do believe that's a big part of um, how I'm getting. I I think that helps with getting them in the door and having them warm, right? Because they get to see real words from my real clients um, to make them feel like this is a welcoming place. So there you have it. A summary of tips: ask your members for Google reviews. Do that according to hit the gong, a system. Do that regularly. Yeah. Second, you can follow up on leads. It's simple. You can automate that in a second. And then third, try the prescriptive model in your sales process. If you are not a believer and you don't want to be taken and say it's snake oil or whatever, try it and track, track the stats against your normal process. See what works better. Then make some changes. Nate noticed 10% improvement. 10% more leads closed in your sales office is measurable money in your pocket. You can't go wrong with that. Nate. Uh, this has been great. I'm not going to rant anymore because uh, you've given people simple, actionable stuff to do, and I want them to take action. So thank you so much for being here today. Great. Thank you, Mike. Great, great stuff here, guys. If you do this stuff, your set show and close rates will improve, which means your bottom line will improve. You'll have a better career, a better life, and you'll have more staff members and happy mem and happy clients take some of these steps today. That was Nate Muller. This is Run a Profitable Gym. Thanks for listening. Please hit subscribe on your way out wherever you're watching or listening because I believe that you can use this show to grow your business every week.